Hey everyone, it's Pam and I'm here with my monthly update video letting you know everything that I was up to in the month of July. July was a pretty busy month in terms of things that I was doing outside of YouTube. I was a guest on two different podcasts and I got to talk about some of my favorite games on them. The first is the Quick Save Club, which is a sort of offshoot of the Cartridge Club. It's dedicated to PC games and every month a game is picked people come together and play it and discuss it, and there is a podcast at the end to discuss it a little further. I was on the episode about Planescape Torment, which was very exciting since it is my favorite game of all time, although Bloodline sort of battles it out for that top spot at times. It was great to have a reason to play through it from beginning to end, sort of remember why I loved it so much, remember how great the writing is. The writing is not just great in the content and the story, but also just the style of it. Uh, yeah, it was a really good time. I've It's one of those games where I've kind of wanted to make videos on it, but it seems like very intimidating, like I don't know what I'd say about it, there's so much to talk about, so it was nice to get to sit down with Kevin and Josh and just discuss the game and all of the cool things it does. So check out the Quick Save Club, there will be a link in the description below. The second podcast that I was on is also part of the Cartridge Club family, and that is Bonus Barrel. And Bonus Barrel is a podcast where the beginning is sort of a little just, you know, what everyone's been doing, and then the second half is a discussion and sort of group review of a game they've picked for that episode, and this one was about Star Tropics, which is another favorite of mine, sort of one of my top five on the NES for sure. I didn't actually play through too much of Star Tropics for the podcast specifically, but I have a pretty good memory of it. It was one of the first videos I ever made on this channel, so it was great. I talked to Rob and Sean and Seiji about Star Tropics. There was a little disagreement. Some people loved the game, some people didn't like the gameplay at all, uh, so it was a lively discussion and uh, you can check out Bonus Barrel as well. And the last guest appearance, which was technically in August, but happened before I filmed this video, uh, the channel Smash JT made a video last month sometime about double standards in YouTube gaming between men who produce content and women who produce content, and afterwards he wanted uh, someone else's take on it to see like what I thought about the double standards, if they existed, what could happen to sort of solve them. So I recorded a video for much longer than I intended to, and he has presented that now on his channel. Uh, just my thoughts on double standards. We talk a bit about my um, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines video, sort of how I presented myself in that and the success it had. And yeah, it was nice. I don't talk about that kind of stuff too much on my own channel, so it was nice to sort of be able to get that kind of my opinions about that on sort of off my chest on a video. So check out Smash JT, there will be a link to that video as well. And the last update is that I have launched uh, merch. So if you want any Cannot Be Tamed merchandise with the channel logo on it, uh, you can get those in one of two places. The first is Teespring, which you should be able to see actually down the bottom of the video. Uh, Teespring is the service that plugs into YouTube directly. And also there is a storefront on TeePublic where you can get things like shirts and mugs and notebooks and things like that. So if you want to wear any Cannot Be Tamed merchandise, uh, that's where you can get them. I know TeePublic has a lot of sales. Um, I think the last one has already ended, so you might want to wait until the next one to get something. But uh, yeah, if you feel like supporting me in that way, then you can pick up a t-shirt or something. Now on to pickups. There was a new store that just opened near my house recently and Will went there and found they had a bunch of strategy guides and knew that I liked them so he bought me the strategy guide for Playboy, The Mansion, everything's about to fall off my lap. This is a game that I did QA on a little while ago so I know a lot about this game actually but it's a good one to have in the collection and he also got me the guide for... Grand Theft Auto Vice City, which I talked about a little bit in my PS2 collection video. 
Um, in terms of games, there were a few things I got. The first thing is Land of the Dead Road to Fiddler's Green. This is another one. Again, I just wanted it because it was made at the company that I worked at. Uh, by the time I started there, the QA on the main game was both mostly done, but I did do some QA on the online stuff. Uh, this is one of those games where like it's not very good. I look for it at every show I find, but it's usually around like 30 or $40, and I'm never quite willing to pay that because I don't actually want to play it, but I think uh, Will talked the guy down to $20 on this and figured, okay, that's probably the best I'm going to do, and now I can stop looking for it. And then I got two brand new games, uh, new releases just came out last week. First is Wolfenstein Youngblood. I love the Wolfenstein, um, at games as shooters and as stories. This one is sort of an offshoot, just like the... Oh, I forget what the offshoot of the first one was called. The Old Blood, possibly? Um, this stars BJ Blazkowicz's Daughters, and it's a co-op game, although I've mostly been playing it alone. Well, I've totally been playing it alone so far, uh, but you do get an AI companion to play as the other sister. I'll probably talk about this a little bit more in my next video, because as of now I've only done a couple missions. So far I am liking it. The two sisters are like big dorks and I find them very entertaining. The story elements aren't quite as heavy as they usually are, which is a little bit disappointing though. And lastly, the thing that has been taking up a lot of my time, I actually would like to finish filming this so I can go play it now, is Fire Emblem Three Houses. And this was a bit of a surprise for me. I don't care for the Switch too much. I don't like anime. I haven't had a JRPG that I really enjoyed in a number of years, but I heard Austin Walker on Waypoint Radio talk about this a few weeks ago, and it just sounded really interesting. And I do like uh, sort of strategic tactical combat, so I decided I would pick this up. And honestly, I love it so far. It's uh, taken me completely by surprise. I'm really getting attached to the characters and sort of planning everyone's training out, deciding what class they're going to be and what skills they're going to excel in. The combat is a lot of fun. I like that you get to control such a big sort of army of characters. It's not just your typical three or four that you usually get in a JRPG. And yeah, just um, Loving it a lot. I'll probably talk about this more next month as well. Um, I've put, I think, 20 hours in so far. Um, soon to be more. Now on to what I played in July. Uh, I obviously spent a lot of time on Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, which I made a review of a few weeks ago. It was really, really good, really surprising in how much I enjoyed it. And it also really gave me an urge to play more Metroidvanias. So I asked on Twitter for more recommendations and one that came up a few times was called Time Spinner. And Time Spinner is another one that is very obviously influenced by Castlevania Symphony of the Night. The mechanics and things are very similar. It's got more of a um, story heavy bit, like there's some a little more dialogue and conversations and sort of side quests for people, but otherwise in terms of how it plays and how you get new weapons and new abilities, it's very similar to Castlevania. Um, I really liked it. I, I didn't enjoy it quite as much as Bloodstained purely because of the gameplay. Um, I just didn't like the weapons and skills quite as much, but overall it was good. It was another very satisfying map to explore, and it also had a cool sort of time shift element, so you were exploring the same map in two different time periods, so something that you would do in the past could then influence how the map looked in the future, and that was the way of uh, progressing forward in many ways. So yeah, Time Spinner. I played it on Xbox One, but I'm pretty sure it's available uh, pretty much everywhere. So if you're looking for another good Metroidvania, it's also fairly short, maybe eight hours or so. Uh, it's pretty good as well. Another game I played is called Beholder 2, which I got a free code for, and 
Beholder is a game I played a few years ago. In the first one, you're a landlord um, in a totalitarian regime, and you're sort of watching people's apartments and getting orders from above and deciding whether you're going to fulfill them and just be another cog in the machine, or whether you're going to try to help people out when they're in trouble. This takes that... Um, sort of just to another level. In this, you start out as a low-level employee of a company, of like the bureaucracy. And uh, the format is switched, so you actually move a character around sort of in 3D, but the the tone and everything is the same. Uh, it does draw some comparisons to Papers, Please, but I find it's a little lighter in tone, like it's a little more of a dark comedy than something that's really going to give you a whole lot of sort of empathy for the plight of other people. But again, it's just about on the one hand, doing your very, very mundane job, and on the other hand, interacting with your coworkers, deciding whether you're going to just like stab them in the back in order to scramble on top, or whether you're going to try to help them out with their lives. Overall, it was fairly good. I did find that sort of as you went, as you sort of progress up through this bureaucracy, the quality sort of dipped a little. Like the first floor, the intro area, was definitely the best for me. And then as you went on, the sort of mundane day-to-day -day job got less interesting and people's stories got less interesting. And the ending came kind of quickly. Like it, it felt like it kind of came out of nowhere and took me by surprise. But overall, it was a good time. I enjoyed playing it all the way through. Not quite sure if I liked it as much as the first one, though. I also played a new, to me, game by Wadjedi, who make great point-and-click adventures. Uh, the one I played is called Shardlight. It has their usual great voice acting, great pixel art. It's a story about a woman who is a mechanic in a semi-post-apocalyptic uh, world. It's... Uh, controlled by a group of sort of nobles who keep everyone else down and you get torn between this one guy who is in charge who has some kind of uh, soft spot for you for some reason versus a, a band of rebels who are seeking to rise up and overthrow the nobility. It was really good. Uh, the puzzles were decent, nothing too moon logic-y. Um, the writing was good. I liked the story. It did draw from a lot of other kind of stories and games, so it wasn't the most original idea in the world, but overall it was very good. And the last thing I just finished this month was actually a game I backed on Kickstarter a while back, and it is a visual novel called Distress. It is a sci-fi adventure where you play the captain of a ship who, uh, you're basically mercenaries, you take jobs here and there, and you find yourself on a strange planet that is highly militarized, crawling with monsters, and you have to find out what's going on here, use your wits to survive, try to keep your crew alive. The writing in it was very good. It has a very cool art style and um, character design that was unique, and I really liked it. There seems to be a lot of branching paths. I didn't take too many of the paths. I reloaded a few saves to see what else could be done, but it seems like there was a ton which I never even saw. And yeah, it's really good. It's sort of about, ri again, rising up against the people in charge, against these big corporations, making big decisions that could have wide-ranging implications. And yeah, it was good. Um, overall, I played a lot of good good games with really good writing in July, so that was definitely very nice. Um, I think that is it for this video. If you have any cool pickups or any great games you played last month that you want to recommend to me, let me know in the comments. Uh, other than that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.